Darktable 4.2.0 is out now, and in this video, we're going to look at the new features. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 121 of Understanding Darktable. In this episode, we're going to continue our look at some of the new features in Darktable 4.2.0. The next thing in the release notes is the pixel pipe used for image display in the darkroom view has been reworked so that it can be used elsewhere. So it's now in the darkroom view. It's in the second display window if you're using that feature. It's in the duplicate manager. It's in the style preview and it's in the snapshot routine. This is allowed for code deduplication, as well as enhancement of many of these features, which we'll get to as we work our way through the video. Next up, the second darkroom image window has now been enhanced to support both the focus peaking and the ISO 12646 color assessment modes. What that means is that if we turn on the second darkroom image window with this icon down in the bottom left hand corner, that will give us our second preview window, which normally you would move off to a second monitor. I won't do that because then you wouldn't see it in my screen capture. Uh, but basically, if I turn on focus peaking in the main dark table window, you will see that focus peaking is now featured in that second window as well. Likewise, if I was to turn on color assessment conditions, which I could do with control B, uh, that will also appear in that second window as well. So that is a new uh, feature for that second image display. And again, that's one of the advantages of them having reworked the pixel pipe so that it now affects that second monitor window or second image window um, the way the pixel pipe works in the darkroom view. Okay, next up we have the snapshot module has been entirely reworked so that instead of using a fixed screen capture, which is what it used to do, it basically just took a bitmap image of your entire screen and that was all you got for your snapshot. It now uses a dynamically generated view using the new pixel pipe functionality. This means that it can now be zoomed and panned with the keyboard and mouse. This is good to know. Let's jump back to our image of Tegan. And let's suppose we did our sort of high contrast, you know, fashion look like so, and we then took a snapshot and we'll then turn off sigmoid, turn off, oh, I have turned off the color balance RGB, so that's good. And now let's turn on filmic. And let's suppose that we did a little bit of adjustment with filmic to something like that. And then we want to compare that with our sigmoid. We would then click on our snapshot. And now we can see that we can zoom in where previously you couldn't do that. What would have happened in the past was that this right hand side, which was our, you know, live view of our darkroom processing, that would have zoomed in, but the left hand side, which was the snapshot, would have stayed at a hundred percent view or, you know, whatever, basically the full screen view, where now we can at least move around and still get the ability to check both the pre and post view from a zoomed in perspective. So that is certainly an improvement to the functionality of the snapshots. Next up, the duplicate manager previously used a different pipe routine to calculate its previews, which often meant that the displayed duplicates differed from the main darkroom view in subtle ways. Use of the new pipe routine now means that these previews will be identical to those produced during darkroom editing. Okay, what does that mean? What I've got here is an image from Mungo National Park where I've processed two different versions. And 
At the moment, as you can see from the film strip, I'm looking at the first of those two versions, which I call desktop edit. In fact, I call both of them desktop edits. Um, but now if I want to get a quick look at the second version, I can left click and hold and get a full size preview in the main section, you know, the main image view of Darktable while I hold my mouse key. And the moment I release, I go back to seeing the version that I'm actually on in the film strip. Likewise, if I now go to the second version of the image in the film strip, I can left click on the first one and get the full size preview of that processed version. And then when I release my mouse key, I'm back to looking at the second processed version. Next up, it is now possible to preview the effect of a user-generated style on an image before applying it. Simply hover over the style name in either the Light Table Styles module or the Darkroom Quick Access menu, and a new tooltip will appear showing the image with the style applied along with details of the modules that are included. Okay, so if I mouse over this particular image and I go to my styles and I hover over a style, we can see that image with its processing applied and then that style applied, which is simply a framing module. Or I could go to my desaturation and grain style. And as you can see, that uses the grain module and the color balance RGB module. Or I could go to color balance RGB and diffuse and sharpen, uh, which uses those two modules. So there you go. You get a real time preview of what a style includes on any given image simply by mousing over the image and then just mousing over the style. And as it said, you can also do that in the dark room with the style shortcut in the bottom left hand corner here. So we can just mouse over that. And again, we get that preview that shows us how that image will look if that style is applied. So that's pretty cool. All right, that will do it for this episode and I will catch you in the next one.